Let's just go for just a moment. Go over to Genesis just quickly with me. Chapter 6, verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Only evil continually. I simply read this text one time preaching at a university and a young reporter came up to me and he said, I don't agree with your interpretation. And I said, young man, I didn't interpret the text. I read it. And he said, well, I don't agree. And I said, young man, let me tell you something. If I could pull out your heart right now, if I could take every thought you have ever had from your first waking moment until this very hour, if I could take every thought you've ever had, not just your deeds, but your thoughts, only your thoughts, and I could put them on a video, and I could show that video here in this auditorium tonight, you would run off of this campus and you would never show your face here again because you have thought things so wicked and so perverted you cannot even share them with your closest friend. As a matter of fact, if your closest friend knew some of the thoughts you've had against him, he would no longer be your friend. And young man, I do not know that because I'm a prophet. I know that because it's what the Scriptures say. And I know that like you, I too am a man. I can say the same thing about every one of you here tonight. You would spend every ounce of energy to hide from everyone in this room what has gone through your mind just in the last hour. Don't tell me Scripture's not right when it talks about all men having sinned because all men are sinners. Go to Genesis 8 for a moment. Verse 21, And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma, and the Lord said to Himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man, for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. This can mean evil from childhood, evil from a babe. Let me share with you something that a correction officer said a long time ago. He said this, Discover that human nature is such that imagine for a moment an 18-month-old baby that you're holding in your arms. And that 18-month-old baby sees that shiny watch on your wrist. And he grabs for your watch. And you pull his hand away and say no. He begins to cry and move about in your arms. He reaches for the watch again. You grab his hand and say no. He begins to scream and cry. He reaches for the watch again. You say no. He begins to frail his arms even in the direction of your face. I submit to you that if that 18 month old baby had the strength of an 18 year old man, he would slaughter you there where you stand, Father. Rip the watch off your arm and walk across your bloody body out the door without feeling an ounce of remorse. You see, here's something you need to understand. Hitler was not an anomaly. Hitler was not a phenomenon. Hitler was what everyone in this room has the potential of being. And not only that, you need to understand, even in all the, all the wickedness of Hitler, Hitler was still restrained by the common grace of God. And you need to know this, that if it were not for the common grace of God restraining you in your unconverted state, you would make Hitler look like a choir boy. What we do not understand is what Scripture teaches about men. Men are evil. You say, well, I don't agree. That's because you've grabbed enough of Christianity to stand, but you don't believe the Bible. The Scripture's testimony against you and all men is that we are born with evil. And we are evil. Do you have to teach a child to lie? Do you have to teach a child to be self-centered? Do you have to teach a child to be selfish? Do you have to teach a child to be brutal to other children? They learn that on their own. Set them free. Discipline them not and see what you have in ten years. A monster. Why? Because what Scripture says is true. And you hold your ears and you say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. In the same way that a person dying of cancer is in denial and says to the doctor, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But by cupping the hands over your ears, you close yourself off from any remedy. 
the first thing you must embrace is this. All men are born in sin and given over to sin. And all men are born hating God. You say, well, I never hated God. Yes, you do. If you did not, if you did not, and in your, in your unconverted state, hate God, then the Bible is not true. Because the Bible calls all men haters of God and enemies of God. You say, but I loved God ever since I was little. No, you loved an image of God that you created with your own mind and you loved what you made. But if someone would have come to you and pointed out the God of Scripture, you would have said, I could never love a God like that. So many times I'll go to people and they say, well, I've loved God all my life. And I say, can I sit down with you for a half an hour and just explain from Scripture some of the historical Christian beliefs about God? And after a half an hour, a good churchman will say, that's not my God. And I have to say, of course it's not. But it is the God of Scripture. It is the God of Scripture. Let's take another look. Let's go on over to Isaiah. Isaiah 64, verse 6. For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy garments, and all of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. I helped build a church years ago in San Pablo, near the Colombian border on the, on the Amazon. And it was a colony of lepers. Have you ever seen a leper? Have you ever smelt a leper? If I brought a leper of the worst sort, there's about three different kinds of leprosy. If I brought a leper of the worst sort, you'd smell him before he got out of the parking lot into this building. If he walked in here, he would be a mass of rotting flesh, body fluid, pus, and blood. When he said all of us are like one who is unclean, this is possible to reference here. And let's say that all you find people say, well, we must do something about this. So you go to Kansas City, to the most exclusive shop, and you buy the most fine, some finest silk you can find. And you take that silk, and you bring it back, and you wrap that man head to toe in that fine white silk, and you say, bravo, look what we've done. We've saved the day. We've made him presentable. But that silk only lies on that flesh for a few seconds. And the corruption of that man's body begins to bleed through that fine silk. And that silk becomes as corrupt as the man himself. That is why all our good works are like filthy rags before God. Because we ourselves, prior to conversion have a heart of stone, a God-hating heart, a heart of evil, born in sin, given towards sin. That is the testimony of Scripture. Some of you in your 60s, 70s, you heard preaching like this all the time when you were children. But now it seems the new generations to follow cannot bear with truth. They would rather be deceived and think well of themselves. But a man who will not accept his illness cannot be healed. A man who does not have all his hopes crushed with regard to his own self-righteousness, merit and worth cannot turn to Christ. We must realize that we are destitute and there is only one Savior and His name is Jesus.